everyone, it's Kendra and we're going to be playing Modded Minecraft. It's Rustic Waters. Last episode, which is our first episode, we went ahead and we did a lot of our beginning quest items. So we have our furnace, we have a trader's workshop and a tailor's workshop. This trader's workshop and this tailor's workshop are um, a couple of the workshops that you do a lot of your crafting in. Okay, so you'll notice that in the trader's workshop and also in the tailor's workshop, there's an item area here for water or for liquid, I should say. And then over here, you need different little tools to make crafting. Items. So it's a little bit more complicated than the regular crafting table. And then also we have these little hopping bonsais where we have our little trees here that are giving us goodies in this chest. It's doing pretty good. I've been on for like an hour or so just letting things populate. So we have gotten quite a bit of string. I, I used a bunch of it up, but we've gotten quite a bit of string. And we also have our oak leaves and our regular oak um, wood in there. Here you can see a bunch of the items I've been gathering from our sleuths to our right hand side. Let me go show you those over here. Well, these are sleuths here and I've been getting some um, ores out of it. And then over down here, you're going to see some of the items that we've been grabbing from these strainers. They're actually getting quite low right now. So we're probably gonna have to make some more survivalist strainers. You'll also notice from our last episode that I added this extra tier of the sluice. This way we can get double ores um, going at once. Let me go ahead, I'll show you how it works here. We'll use some dirt and I'm gonna get some water real quick. Okay, so we have both of these. This one, you'll notice how it goes straight into the other one. So if we add our dirt for this uh, demonstration, and then we go ahead and we add water to this top one, you'll notice that it added water down to the bottom one as well. Made it a little bit more easier for us so we don't have to keep grabbing water. I mean, you still have to do it for the, each time you do a double batch. Over here is where I've been putting all of our ores. And then I've also been going ahead and using the furnace below to create iron ingots. I've done some other ingots as well, like lead and silver. Let's go into our quest book and you will notice if I go back to our introduction key, we have here some items that we need to make. So I'm gonna start with actually probably the super strainer power just to get it off of our list here. So the survivalist strainer, the dense strainer. This strainer will actually allow us to get money and some other items that our regular strainers won't allow us to get. So let's go ahead and create this. I mean, we're gonna need one soon anyways because our other strainers are running on empty. So let's go ahead and get this created. So the Taylor's Workshop, we're gonna need two fabric meshes, three strings and four sticks. Survivalist strainer, we need the dense version. Let's go ahead and make this. Yay, so we have this. Um, once our uh, strainers run out, I will go ahead and swap this out. Since we completed this, we can grab this acceleration wand. That's awesome, that's a good one. This quest is optional and can be completed at any point. Survivalist Strainer Dense is a high quality version of the normal Survivalist Strainer. It does not provide some of the useful mob drops that the normal strainer does, but it has a chance to catch fish and treasure items that are very useful. You may want to have at least one operating alongside your normal strainer. This is gonna be really good for us because we'll start getting more of the gill, so then we can purchase items in the gill traders section. Next up is grinding it out. So this grindstone will assist you in making alloy blends. It requires a crank in the top and must be turned manually, but it will suffice until you get powered automation. So yeah, so let's go ahead and see what we need for this. We're gonna need stone, which we've been collecting from the strainers for the past hour or so. And then we are gonna need to make this artisan's flint handsaw, which will be a, uh, I think this might actually be a tool that we'll be able to use in one of our workshops at one stage. And then we also have this tripwire hook. So let's go ahead and go create these items so that we can get our grindstone. Let's go ahead and see if we can make one of these. Yep, we got that new recipe unlocked. And then let's go ahead and try this tripwire as well. There we go, we got the tripwire hook, and then we'll go ahead and make the actual grindstone. There we go, we got the grindstone. We're gonna need to find a place to put this down. 
So let's go ahead and put this here for now. And then we will check our quest book. I think, yep, we got a wooden crank. So we're gonna need to go ahead and put this wooden crank on here. I'm not sure if it's, okay, that's not how you do it. There we go, haha, -ha, figured it out. So we have this crank here and then we put it on top. I think I did shift and then I clicked on the little dot on top and it placed it there. So we have a few ingots. I'm gonna grab one of these iron ingots. I'm right clicking on the little crank. Let's see, did it make it? Oh, it didn't take too long. Yeah, so we already got some pulverized iron. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to do a lot of fun stuff with this later on. So let's see what we need to do next. We did the grindstone, let's go back. Some pipe it hot. Okay, so this one we get a treasure truss from. So let's go ahead and make this pipette. So it looks like we need two glass panes and then one regular glass piece. And it's all done in the crafting table. Let's go ahead and do that. So I know that we're probably gonna need quite a few of these in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and make three of these. And then I will put them all in our little, uh, what is this, our mechanical toolbox? Yeah, so I'll put all of these in here and then we can use them if we need to get liquids. See, these are really good for if you need to get smaller amounts of liquid out of your trader's workshop or any of your other workshops and they don't, it's not enough to fit in a bucket. So that's, that's a really great way of handling your liquids. Okay, so let's move on. Let's see what we got here. So we can complete this, let's claim this. This is like one of my favorite parts is seeing what we get in these little treasure chests. Okay, so we got a bronze helmet. So it's plus one armor toughness and two armor. So it's plus one and plus one. Oh, oh, okay, so plus one armor toughness and then just plus two armor. Okay, so we got that. What's this? It's a rat upgrade psychic. I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm a little confused by what exactly the purpose of this is. So I'll have to read up on that. So this one has no strainer. So let's go ahead and update that. And then we'll see what kind of goods we get from this. Next up is gonna be pump it up. Let's see what this is. Okay, so it's a water pump and it's, while there are no infinite water machines available at this stage of the game, um, you can use a water pump to help in your automations. Place it right above a body of water and use a lever to give it a redstone signal. It will fill adjacent tanks. So let's go ahead and see what we need for this. We need lead. We need to make tempered glass blocks and we need a funnel. Oh, and this also the stone gear. So let's go ahead and see what we need to make some of these items. Tempered glass block. Okay, so we're gonna need to burn burning items. Okay, so we can burn a single compressed sand using a flint and steel, and then it will create the tempered glass block. So let's go ahead and do that. First, let's make a single compressed sand. I have one already, but I'm gonna just go ahead and make a second one. So we have some extra in the future. Okay, compressed or single compressed sand. Let's go ahead and throw these on the ground. Whoops, we don't wanna pick them back up. So let's move back. There we go, started it on fire. Yep, it worked. There we go, I think we got them. Okay, so we have these tempered glass blocks now. Let's go ahead and see what else we need. Okay, so we need to make a funnel, which involves some iron and making a bucket. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a bucket. I think we're actually gonna need a couple of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and make two more. And then let's go ahead and put our bucket there. Oh, I didn't need to put all of those in there. Okay, so we have a funnel. We are in the trader's workshop. I believe this is where we need to go. We're looking for the water pump, I believe. Here is the water pump. So let's go ahead. It looks like we have everything. There we go, we have a water pump. Uh, I don't have everything we need yet to actually set up a water station, but um, we'll see if we have time in this episode. If not, we can do that in the next episode. 
Let's go get our rewards. Oh, we got the fluid dial. So this fluid dial can be slapped on the front of most fluid containers to give you information at a quick glance. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. And next up is our funny funnels. Okay, I just made one and I should have held on to it. Okay, let's go ahead and make another funnel. Uh, it's right here. Let's go ahead and we need some iron. Okay, we have a funnel. And then we want to make the other item. So the other item is a tank and it needs six iron ingots and a bucket. Before I go making this, I wanna go read up on what this funny funnel. So it says, tired of running to the water hole for each bucket of purified water? A funnel will automatically siphon water from the tank placed above it and fill empty buckets sitting in an attached test. You can then hopper the buckets from the chest into a furnace to make purified water out of the other side. So we're able to automate our production of the purified water. The golden bucket can smelt four buckets of water into purified water at once in a furnace. Looks like we also get one from this quest. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and make this tank. So it looks like we have six there. I could have just typed it in and found it, but I think this works just as well. Okay, so we got our tank, we have our funnel, and we have our water pump. So we'll be able to probably next episode make a water station and maybe even create a automated area where we can get some purified water. Expansion. So we got our first expansion and oh, this one's telling us that we need to go get some orange coral, some pink coral, and some cyan coral. So it is important that you overcome any hesitation to venture into the water. I was actually in the water earlier. I was grabbing some coral for our hopping bonsai trees that we got going on uh, because the dirt was just going way too slow. But anyway, so get your feet wet right now, collecting some coral from the ocean floor. For being so brave, you will receive your first hub expansion controller key. Further keys can be obtained when you complete the quest tabs noted with key. Remember Remember, each HEC key is a one-time use. Select the wall which you would like to expand out from and right-click the lock with your key. So let's go ahead and go grab ourselves some coral. Um, so we need orange, pink, and cyan. I'm gonna go ahead and put anything I have away real quick. Um, I'd prefer not losing everything accidentally. Here we go. It's our first excursion into the water. Okay, let's go down. We have our little Subnautica oxygen uh, dial over on our left-hand side. Oh, look, there's a ship above us. That's cool. Yeah, there's a ship right above us. I've gone ahead and I've grabbed the orange coral, the pink and the cyan. We can now get our expansion key. So I think I'm gonna just go ahead and do this over here, the one that doesn't have anything. Wow, look at that. That's so cool. Ah, we have all these torches too, so nothing will spawn. Yeah, I think this one, I can't tell if this one's taller than the other one or not. Well, anyways. We have a whole new area. We'll have to figure out what to do in there. Let me go over here. I think there's still a couple things that we can do real quick before the end of this episode. Let's see, furry friends. We can make a cauldron. Now that you are setting up a strainer and sluice operation, you may need some help around your hub, automating a few processes. These murky waters are filled with rats who have held up in shipwreck ruins. Let's try to lure a few of them in. They are smart animals and can be of use. So yeah, at some point we'll be able to have rats and then we'll put them to work. I believe they can turn ore into iron ingots and they can possibly even change iron ingots into plates. Yeah, I'm not sure when we'll be able to find any rats. I, I'm not sure if we need to actually create them somehow. So we'll have to look more into that. Let's go ahead and make this cauldron. It's pretty simple. Just serve crafting table with some iron ingots. Let me go over here, go do that. Bong item. 
Okay, here's our cauldron. Cool, we can claim it. We get a cow in a jar and a bucket. So we have milking it. So it's a block of cheese. I think this might be be the beginning of getting rats and taming them. So we'll start that in a later episode. Over here we have, we definitely need to make this. Um, it's the innkeeper and this is a hearthstone. The hearthstone links you to your spawn point, your bed. It must be used sparingly as it has a 30 minute cooldown. It also cannot be used in a pinch as you must channel the cast for eight seconds before you are teleported. You must shift click on your bed to set your hearth point. So let's go ahead and see what we need to make this. It looks like we just need six stones and one of this opicium. I don't know, but we have some because we've gotten it from quests in the past. Earth, there we go, the hearthstone. Let's do this. Here's our hearthstone. So just right clicking on the bed doesn't actually do anything. It just makes you sleep. So I'm gonna try shift click. I think that's what it told us. So our hearthstone is now linked to our bed. Okay, so I'm gonna click it. Woo, and I ended up over on the bed. Awesome. Let's see what we have here. We have a rat upgrade for strength and we have a resonant conversion kit. We have a keeping it warm and a moo money moo problems. So let's go ahead into keeping it warm. This one wants a campfire. Uh, we just need some wood. So about four pieces of wood and then some cobblestone and it's all in the trader's workshop. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. Campfire, here's a campfire. I think we have it all. Perfect, okay, so campfire. Let's go ahead and claim the rewards. So we get a flint and still and a bully's brew, which might come in handy here shortly if we wanna go kill a couple of those squid out there. The ocean is a dark, frigid, and dangerous place. Expectedly, these cold waters will require you to actively work to maintain your body temperature. This will become easier later when you can make machines that will regulate climate in your base. But you will always want to be prepared when you venture out into the depths. Okay, so it says tip. Your UI will give you hints to the status of your temperature. Keep a close eye on the cold or hot symbols. So our temperature is a little circle next to our armor. Um, so it will, sometimes you'll see it start like an arrow going down and that's telling you that your temperature is getting lower and lower. I believe it turns like bluer as you get colder and like more of an orange color as you get warmer or start overheating. So you can overheat or you can die from being too cold. You can put our campfire here. Can we turn it on with this flint? Yes, we can. We got a little fireplace going. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a sword and then I'm gonna go out. Let's grab this. I'm gonna go out and see if we can kill ourselves a couple of squid. Let's go see what we got. We gotta be careful of um, sharks because they will kill you let's go please give me an ink sack haha -ha. did i get anything oh i got a turd so i think we might actually be able to make our wallet here shortly so let's go ahead and see what we need for this wallet again okay so i just need a chest and two woven cloths I need to make a chest in the trader workshop this is one thing I wish they would have just left in the crafting table. Here is the wallet. This one needs a crafting table. So I think we have everything. Let's go ahead and go to the crafting table. Let's go ahead and click on there. I have five gil from a previous quest that we'll go ahead and put in there. And we're also gonna see, do we get, okay, yeah. So we have one five gil from doing the wallet. To be successful, you will engage in buying and trading in an in-depth economy facilitated by underwater villagers. You will receive gil currency from quests, mob drops, and most importantly, by selling goods to the village. Villagers. The wallet only holds gill, but will keep your inventory organized. While your funds are limited at the start, there are means to generate much more gill later on. Sea merchants can seem expensive until then. At some point, we'll be going out and looking for some villages, and then we'll be able to start trading with the villagers. Let me go ahead and claim this. Let's go into our wallet and add our money. Oh, look, it also gives you the total of 10 gill up here. We got 10 gill. We don't want to spend it all in one place though. <laughs> 
Yeah, we'll probably find some good stuff in the Gill Traders. I was in there earlier and I didn't really see anything I wanted. Right now, what I really would like was some of those hopper, or not hoppers, but um, the hopping bonsai trays that you can use. I wanted some more of those, but I couldn't find any. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode now. Uh, we were able to finish that section in the quest book. We have this whole area over here. I'm not sure quite what we're gonna do with it yet. I was thinking maybe a mob farm or a... Um, army of mice over here. I will be doing new episodes of this Minecraft Rustic Waters every Monday. So if you guys like this episode and would like to see what happens next, please subscribe, like, and ring that bell. Um, so goodbye now.